Photoexcited pi systems of organic molecules commonly engage in pericyclic reactions. And the hallmark of pericyclic reactions is cyclic electron flow, the movement of pi electrons in a cyclic fashion, such that if we just look at the curved arrows, it's hard to identify a source and a sink of electrons per se as electrons are moving around in a circle. Classic example of a pericyclic reaction is the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition or Diels Alder reaction that you see here, where a 4 electron, 4 atom pi system engages with a 2 electron, 2 atom pi system to form a six membered ring through cyclic electron flow. And typically, this involves the conversion of pi bonds to sigma bonds and the shifting of pi bonds around in various ways. Photochemical pericyclic reactions originating from excited states have complementary selectivity and complementary allowedness to ground state or thermal pericyclic reactions. And this makes photochemical pericyclic reactions extremely valuable in a preparative sense. They open the door to synthetic reactions that we would not otherwise have access to. In this video, we're going to do a brief survey of the possible photochemical pericyclic reactions. We'll get into more details when we talk about the photochemistry of alkenes and aromatics in later videos. We can talk about pericyclic reactions on a bit more precise footing by not just saying that cyclic electron flow is involved, but by stipulating in particular that pericyclic reactions involve a fully concerted step with multiple bonds forming and breaking at the same time in which bond reorganization happens through a transition state that is completely or fully conjugated, meaning there's a cyclic array of p orbitals or pi type orbitals spanning all of the atoms involved at the transition state. This idea that the transition state has to be fully conjugated actually sets limits on the allowedness of pericyclic reactions and gives us insight into how they actually take place. So it's worth keeping in mind and we'll apply this idea as we do orbital analyses of photochemical pericyclic reactions moving forward. There are three types of pericyclic reactions that we'll see. Cycloadditions involve the combination of two separate pi systems to form a ring. And these are named using the size of the pi systems involved. For example, when two two atom pi systems are involved, such as two molecules of ethylene, like you see here, the cycloaddition is called a 2 plus 2, and the product is a four-membered cyclobutane ring. Electrocyclic reactions involve cyclic electron flow within a contiguous pi system of typically an even number of atoms, and these are named using either ring closing, RC, or ring opening terminology, so this is a forward ring closing, ERC, electrocyclic ring closing, and in reverse, it's an ERO, electrocyclic ring opening. And six pi here refers to the number of pi electrons involved. Six pi electrons, six atoms, it's a six pi ERC or six pi ERO process. Sigmatropic rearrangements involve the shifting of a sigma bond from one end of a pi system to another. In a sigmatropic rearrangement, the sigma bond actually participates in the conjugation in the transition state. And the sigma bonding electrons are actually involved in the cyclic electron flow. Sigmatropic rearrangements are named using a bit more of a complicated system where we number the atoms on each side of the migrating sigma bond and list those numbers with the smaller first to describe the sigmatropic rearrangement. So for example here, this hydrogen we can label as atom number one on one end of this really key migrating sigma bond, the CH bond right here. And we can number the atoms on the other side, starting with this carbon and working around, including all of the atoms that connect the starting point and the ending point for the hydrogen. So we go all the way from carbon one to carbon five, and we can see that carbon five is where that hydrogen ends up. Because the sigma bond migrates from position one to position one, on the hydrogen side, there's only one atom on that side, and from position one to position five on the carbon side, this is called a one five sigmatropic rearrangement. And briefly here, let's draw some curved arrows to depict electron flow in each of these reactions. There are actually multiple ways to do this because of the cyclic nature of electron flow, and that's worth keeping in mind that the curved arrows here are a little bit hand wavy because there are multiple ways to draw them. So we can see in all three cases that we've got electrons moving around in a circle, and we can envision a transition state in which all of the atoms are linked and fully conjugated. 
An important point that's particular to photochemical pericyclic reactions is that they commonly occur via conical intersections or funnels. Thinking back to our general mechanistic paradigm for photochemical reactions, the way these typically work is there's an excitation to say S1. S1 returns to the ground state potential energy surface through a very rapid movement through a conical intersection or funnel. Most commonly in photochemical pericyclic reactions, no intermediates are involved. That's not universal, but it's a good starting point. It's a good zero order guess. So to remind us what a conical intersection looks like on a potential energy surface diagram, I actually want to start with this diagram from this paper by Garavelli, where he draws a, a sort of classical potential energy surface diagram for the photochemical ERO process of cyclohexadiene. We can identify a conical intersection here where the 2A1 potential energy surface crosses the 1B2 potential energy surface. And we can identify here a funnel with a qualitatively different structure where there is what we call an avoided crossing. The potential energy surfaces avoid crossing because of their identical symmetry, but there is still some probability of the representative point making a jump from the 2A1 to the 1A1 surface. The reason these are called conical intersections is because if we think about these in three dimensions, they have a cylindrical symmetry that turns this X into two cones that share a top point. And these are the places where the representative point can cross from one potential energy surface to another. In the same paper, Garavelli presents a more modern diagram that allows for symmetry breaking. And so classically, these Potential energy surfaces of identical symmetry cannot cross, and so they avoid one another, and we get these small energy gaps at so-called avoided crossings. But if we allow for symmetry breaking, the situation changes. We can imagine asymmetric structures being involved in the reaction pathway, which is shown here in the middle of this brief mechanistic picture. And we still have a conical intersection between S1 and S0, now with no avoided crossing that's meaningful, really, for the reaction path. We're not so concerned with the details of these potential energy surfaces, just noting at the moment that conical intersections are key for our mechanistic understanding of photochemical pericyclic reactions, and this electrocyclic ring opening is no exception. Where these conical intersections occur are the key points where we go from the excited state surface to the ground state surface. And so their structures, their dynamics, the time scale of how this takes place are all of great interest to us in elucidating photochemical mechanisms.